Hey folks, Grizz here, and today I'm going to show you the basics of reloading. I'm going to show you how to take a pile of this, spent cases, and turn it into this, loaded ammo. And we're going to be doing it on a single stage press. This is my old RCBS rock chucker. Now I think the single stage press is a great way to start and learn how to reload because it gives you an idea of what goes on each step of the way. Reloading isn't rocket science, but it is gunpowder, so you need to pay attention and know what you're doing. I recommend having, you know, a friend who's experienced in reloading kind of take you through uh, the basics and show you, you know, how to do it when you're getting started, and that way you're sure you're doing things right. And as you can see before me, we start out with a clean tumbled case with the spent primer still in it. And we then run it through the first die, which is decap resize. It takes the spent primer out and does a resize. And then we run it through the second die, which is the belling die, which slightly expands the case mouth to accept the bullet. And then I go through and hand prime it with a new primer, dump powder in it, set a bullet in it and then it goes through the last die which seats and crimps the bullet. But hey, why don't we get started? The first task when the brass comes in from the range I sort out the shotgun holes. Let me adjust the camera here a little bit. I don't think it's angled quite right. And I put it in the tumbler with media and cut up dryer sheets which helps control the dust. Now, my target time is, you know, two to three hours, but it seems like I always forget it, and it's in there for about five hours. Then it comes to the media separator, where close that lid, tumble it around, and get all the media out of there. And the, the used uh, dryer sheets, which, as you can see here, do pick up a lot of dust and grime. After that, when they come out of the media separator, I put them in by a handful or two in a tub like this. And the reason I do that is because every now and then I get a 45 long colt case. I don't want that. Also, I take a look, and every now and then, as you can see, that case is quite a bit longer. That's a 357 Magnum case. And if you put that through the belling die, you get a big trumpet bell like that, and you don't want that. Another reason I do this is you can hear a lot of times a split case. And, as you can see, that case right there is split. And you don't want a split case because that can cause you big problems, especially in your rifle. Okay, and I will probably fast forward through some of the setup here just to keep things from being too boring. Here's a flat of primers, put that one back away, and fast forward through this part. And we're back real time. As I said, the first step is to take the, the clean spent case, pop that primer out, and resize it. And as you can see, the primer's out of there. And we'll just go ahead and run through these. Now you probably noticed that I didn't adjust my die in that speeded up part. And the reason is, is I have these lock rings 
locked down to where it's set up to where all I have to do is turn it in there and snug it up. Okay, there's our six cases. Now we go to the speedy fast part. Let's change dies. And now we're back in real time. Now I'll put the paper behind the press here to hopefully allow you to see it. So now we have those cases that have been resized and then had the primer punched out. Now we're going to bell the case mouth so it's easier to seat the bullet. Now if you take a look at these, you can see there's ever so slightly that case mouse mouth is belled out. You can barely see it, but you can feel it. Now normally I would be going through and doing at a minimum several hundred. And right now I have over 2,000 waiting for me. So it is going to be some hours on here. Although I'm hoping to get a progressive press soon where each pull of the handle will yield a loaded bullet. Okay, there we go. We ran it through. Now let's speed things up again and change dies. Okay, we're back here real time. So now we've gone through the decap resize and the belling, but before we can do powder and lead, we need to put a new primer in there. And there is a way to do it on the press here, but I prefer to do it with a hand primer like this one and we need the shell plate off of the press and the first primer it picks up upside down that's not a good thing so with the hand primer just get it you see there's a primer there Slide the case in, give it a squeeze, and you can see the new primer is seated. Now when I do this, I go ahead and put them into a 100 round plastic box. And there's a couple reasons for that, and I'll show you that here in a moment. Let me just run these through. Okay, we got those six cases hand primed. Let's go ahead and get our shell plate back on the press here. So we can move on. Yeah, as I told you, I put them in the 100 round case for several reasons. One is so that I can visually inspect them and make sure that the primers are seated fully. If there's a high primer, it's going to hang up in your single action pistol. And another thing I do is I check for the the head stamp on the case. I prefer Starline brass. Uh, I reload everything, but I generally uh, 
separate it and use the star line for matches. Okay, next, it's time for powder and lead. And I already have the powder measure set up. When I first set it up, I put my one pound uh, powder can underneath the spigot and throw 10 charges just to let everything settle. And then I weigh one on my balance beam scale to make it in line, make sure the charge is in line. And once I got this set up, I used to measure every 10th round, then every 20th round. Uh, I never noticed more than, you know, a tenth of a grain deviation to where, you know, if I think things are getting off, I'll remeasure now. I always measure at the beginning, but I don't measure every round. Now, if you're shooting bullseye or something a little bit more with accuracy needs, you may want to check it more often. After I throw the charge in there, I visually check to make sure there is powder in the case. Set a bullet on top and run it through the seat print. And as you can see, it seated the bullet and put a nice roll crimp on there. Hopefully you can see that. Another thing I do, you may have noticed, I tap the case as I take it out, that's just a habit I got into. If there's any tumbling media left in there, that'll get it out. Verify that there is powder in there. Just set a bullet on top of the case. Seat and crimp. And it has a nice roll crimp on there. And these last ones will just do in real time. Now when using a powder measure like this, the key is to have a smooth, consistent throw on it. To kind of herky-jerky, you may wind up with less than consistent results. Hopefully you're getting this on the video, but this should give you an idea of how to reload on a single stage press. Now on a progressive press, you'll have up to five stations, each with a die in there, and you'll have multiple cases running at the same time. So there we go. You should now have an idea how to take empty brass, run it through three dies in a single stage press, and wind up with some nice loaded ammo. I hope you found this informative. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave me a comment. And I'll talk to you soon. This is Grizz signing off.